make sure we're dialed in at 20 with a standard field tip. All right, let's go bottom left hexagon. The new iron wheel, 150 grain single bevel. And now I'm gonna just shoot a broadhead, a big ass broadhead at 20, having not really dialed in to see how much variation we get. Zero broadhead tuning so far. I also have a very nice camera down there that's close. I also have a nice light down there. This is a stupid plan. Let's do it. This is exactly why you don't just screw a broadhead on and go shoot a deer with it right out the gate. Because I was money at 20, 30, 40, 50 with a standard old target tip. But at 20 yards, I'm hitting five inches to the right at 20. So just to see how effective it'll be, I've spun the knock basically one vein rotation around. So whereas before the, the blade was relatively straight up and down, now, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, now we're a lot more flat planed. And that'll change the place where the, the, because the spine is bending at the same point every time, this could either have been a wise decision or it could be a very poor decision. Same aiming point. Close to the same, just slightly higher. Same spot, so we're still getting good consistency at 20, but let's try that last rotation. All right, last rotation of the veins here. So, so far position number two has been the best. That is a huge deal. That's close enough that I would actually move back to 30 if that is repeated with this shot. Like I would move back and get a wider gap and then start broadhead tuning from there. That's how, how much of a difference just knock tuning the start has made. That's ridiculous. Makes a huge difference, especially when it's 150 grain broadhead. This thing is acting like its own wing out front. I'm not having any issues with flight. I've done almost no tuning to this bow. Shot through paper, getting a basic real close to a bullet hole. Throw a broadhead on there. And that rarely happens with a, with a big broadhead like this. My hypothesis is that a single bevel is far more forgiving and the more I shoot them, the more I think I'm right. This arrow right here makes me very happy. This arrow right here makes me very sad. <laughs> this arrow killed a stag in New Zealand at 50 yards. This arrow wounded, maybe killed, slowly killed a black bear in Canada at 15 yards. Iron will, 125 single bevel solid. Iron will, 150 wide solid single bevel. Look at that monster. That's a freaking good looking pair right there. I'm not gonna argue the lethality of the broadheads in this video. That's not the point. What I kind of noticed going between the single bevel and the double bevel was how much quicker I felt like the single bevels basically got in line. The, how much quicker they all of a sudden started to group and then how much easier it was to kind of bring them in to exactly where I wanted them to be. So this hypothesis start, started kind of slowly growing in my brain that then I started digging in a little bit deeper and actually doing the research on. The hypothesis, like I mentioned a minute ago, is that single bevels are more forgiving when it comes to accuracy than a double bevel. 
So let's define what a single bevel broadhead is first compared to a double bevel. Most of us are used to seeing double bevels in knives. So in our everyday lives, like knives and swords, the things that you see online, and I hope I should be flashing uh, examples up here, the standard sword and the standard knife is a double bevel. Basically, they grind both edges of a flat piece of metal down until it creates a point. Now, a single bevel, what they're doing is essentially grinding just one side. So they're leaving one side flat and grinding the other down to make a point that's only on one side. What you're doing with that when you put it into the form of a broadhead is you're creating something that spins. Let's slow the launch down. So as soon as your release goes off, all of the power that is stored in the bow is now moving that string forward. So that string is going from totally static to 200 miles an hour in 30 inches, which is like mind blowing when you think about that, that we're able to shoot something the size of a pencil 200 miles an hour. It reaches maximum velocity within three feet. On a standard double bevel head, what you have is a completely static chunk of metal out front that has no ability to steer. All it is is a flat plane. That's it. What happens as the arrow leaves the bow is the veins at the back of the arrow, which are made of plastic and are very lightweight, start to catch the air. And as they catch the air, they start to twist. They start to put pressure into that arrow shaft and micro torque this arrow. And as they start to micro torque, that, that plane that is this static stagnant chunk of metal at the front of the arrow is being pushed to rotate from the rear. So the pressure that is being put into the shaft is not only the arrow shaft flexing this way, but it is all, also this micro torque that is being created by these veins, which went through a bear. As the arrow flexes like this, it also starts to rotate because the air is catching these veins. And on a standard double bevel head, this front end is no help. In fact, it's a hindrance because of how heavy it is compared to the rest of the arrow. Typically, your broadhead and, and front end components are going to be 25 to 40% of the arrow weight. And you're relying on the wind and these little plastic veins at the back to start spinning the arrow. It's actually kind of a miracle that an arrow can hit with a fixed blade broadhead at all when you think about it that way from 0 to 200 miles an hour with the arrow flexing and flexing in rotation. So let's talk about what a single bevel does. As the arrow exits the bow and reaches 200 miles an hour, as soon as the arrow reaches maximum velocity and leaves the string, the broadhead, because of the single bevel grind that is creating the rotation from the wind, as it is hitting the wind, it is rotating. So not only are you getting the, this micro torquing that I was talking about from the rear end with these veins, what you're getting is maximum torquage from the front. This powerhouse that's on the front of this thing is working in congruency with what's on the back of the arrow. This, these both spin to the right. As soon as this exits the string, this thing starts to spin right and spin right fast and hard. And what Daryl the engineer told me was a phrase called roll rate. He said that the roll rate of a single bevel that's constructed like this should be more than a double bevel. So why would this increase accuracy? I can get a double bevel and a single bevel to both group at basically my maximum capacity. If I take my time with the double bevel, I can get it to hit perfectly out to really, really far distances. Let's say it takes this exact setup with a double bevel head two feet past the bow to start to rotate, which I'm sure if I had a high-speed high speed camera, I could test this. If it takes two feet, my argument is that this takes six inches. This starts to rotate significantly faster. And so because it's doing that, it is stabilizing the arrow, let's say 18 inches sooner. And again, I, I wish I could verify all this stuff. I just don't have a $10,000 slow-mo cam, like hyper slow-mo cam that I can do the tests on. But maybe the Iron Wheel guys will do this after uh, seeing this video. If this is able to stabilize 18 inches quicker right out of the bow, and it's able to just be literally like, 
one three hundred and twentieth of an inch more consistent sooner at 50 yards, that actually translates to real improvement in accuracy. What I found is that while I was in the process of tuning, not getting to perfection, those groups were 25% better out of the single bevels when the bow was still slightly out of tune. So what that also means is it means forgiveness. We obviously don't want to leave the bow out of tune. We don't want to leave the bow out of tune at all. You want to try to get it as close as possible. But what I think it does is I think that it creates a little bit easier of a learning curve for people to switch from a mechanical to an actual single bevel fixed blade broadhead. That's one of the biggest arguments that we hear is I, they don't hit the same as my field points. And the reality is it's kind of a miracle that a double bevel giant flat chunk of metal would actually hit the same as a tight little tiny ball anyway. When you think about all the crazy stuff that is happening with an arrow within the first five feet of you launching it out of the bow, it, yeah, it blows my mind that it actually works. More testing is needed. More testing will be done. Thanks for watching. I'm Brandon McDonald.